Welcome to this week's Tom Bob Outdoors. Friends in wild places. We're in wild and wonderful Cameron County. As you can see behind me here, a beautiful mountain stream. We're after Pennsylvania's native brook trout. Welcome back, folks. I'm with Todd DeLucci from Keystone Predator Outfitters. Now, Todd's most famous for chasing those big, toothy critters. He's the 2014 World Muskie Fly Fishing Champion, but we're on his home turf, and we're after native brook trout. Todd, first of all, what equipment do you need if you're going to go brook trout fishing here in the mountains? Well, in the mountains, we're usually looking for shorter rods. We're, we're in the uh, in brushy brushy streams, tight streams. So we're looking at uh, anywhere from a six and a half to a seven and a half foot fly rod. Uh, some guys like to use lighter weight lines like two weights, even one weights. Uh, I like to go with a three or a four. Uh, helps me punch, punch flies in some of these tight places mm -hmm. I can't normally do with a smaller rod. Uh, this is a seven foot four weight. Uh, just your standard weight forward floating line. You can use a double taper. Uh, this time of year with the, the water getting low, brook trout are really eager to, to eat dry flies. So we're gonna be throwing dry flies. Hey, it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Now, if somebody's coming to the Pennsylvania great outdoors region, Cameron County, or even the 12 and a half counties of Northwest PA that make out the PA wilds, and they say, gee, I wanna go brook trout fishing. Where would you start? Uh, we're pretty blessed up here with, with wild trout, uh, state forest, any, a lot of those streams are full of brook trout in Cameron County, Potter County, that area. Uh, you know, you can pretty much point to a map. Any of the fun. tributaries really of any of the major streams that run in the valleys are probably going to have native brook trout if you do a little bit of hiking and do a little yeah, bit of walking yeah, around. Yeah, any tributary to the First Fork or Driftwood Branch or Cinema Hunting Creek. Pretty much if you're in elk country, yeah. you're in native country. Yeah. All right, we're going fishing. Let's go. Sometimes these streams, depending on where you go, today uh, we picked a stream that might have been somebody here yesterday. Uh, these fish are really spooky. For all we know, a deer run up through the center of the creek. Well, I saw elk tracks back there. All you need is an elk to come down and a couple. I heard elk come down and drink, and we're kind of shot. Yeah, we're gonna. We'll we'll go upstream a little bit, see if we can get above where where anything happened, and see if we can pick up some fish. Folks, the good news is we're in a place that's loaded with native brook trout streams. If this one doesn't work. Pack up the car, take a drive through elk country. We'll find them sooner or later. All right, folks, we've moved upstream, found a couple other nice water holes, and see what's laying in here. Even when the fishing's slow, absolutely gorgeous country. Oh, where was the take? Just missed him. Again. Nobody home. Well, there's a gorgeous hole coming up up top here. Big rocks. Nope. Now, folks, watch how Todd does this one. You pull the rod tight, load it up, and actually 
Use it like a slingshot. Here we go. Yeah, bow and arrow. I said the key on that is make sure you don't grab the point of the hook when you're loading a bow. You'll know it. Even though the fish weren't biting, spirits remained high, being surrounded by the breathtaking beauty of the backwoods of the Pennsylvania wilds. Well, folks, we're on perfect brook trout water, but the brook trout, they're not playing ball. Time to motivate to a new mountain stream. Oh, we had to take her there, little guy. Well, you know what they say, Todd. Bad day fishing beats a good day at work. <laughs> One thing is for certain, it can take an awful lot of patience when fishing for Pennsylvania's native brook trout. When we come back, we're gonna sit down with Todd and learn a little bit about what he carries in his tackle box when fishing for these elusive fish. Stay tuned, you're watching Friends in Wild Places. Introducing the most unique fishing lure on the market today, the Tom Bob Lure with Scent Fusion. What is Scent Fusion? Well, it's a proprietary process in which we infuse every microscopic pore of the lure with a fish attractant that makes it smell and taste just like live bait. This lure stinks. What does it look like? Success. You need this in your tackle box. Time after time, cast after cast. Tom Bob Outdoors. Check us out on the web at TomBobOutdoors.com. Looking for a great getaway spot to disconnect from this? Come relax and unwind with us at the Lakeview Store Cabins and RV Camping. Located across from the Cinnamahoning State Park, smack dab in the heart of the Pennsylvania wilds. And don't forget to pick up your Tom Bob Outdoors and Kika Partners and Conservation logo wear while you're in our area. Give us a call at 814-647-8657 and be sure to like us on Facebook. Visit shop.tombobboutdoors.com for the best deals on all of your favorite Tom Bob Outdoors products. Check out everything from the Tom Bob Lure with Scent Fusion technology to CTX and ITX projectiles, Tom Bob and CMT logo wear, and even the Tom Bob earrings. All this at one convenient location, shop.tombobboutdoors.com. And don't forget to watch Friends in Wild Places Adventure Series on your favorite cable network. Hi folks, welcome back to Friends in Wild Places. You see behind me, mountain stream. Mountain streams in this part of Pennsylvania, they mean brook trout. Native brook trout, I think it's the prettiest fish that God ever made. Well, we're gonna ask Todd a little bit about what tackle you need to get started. So dry flies, wet flies, and uh, somebody wants to give, their, give a shot at brook trout fish and native brook trout, what would you tell them to put in a box the first time out or go to the local fly store? Well, fortunately, brook trout are very opportunistic feeders. So they'll eat just about anything if you can get it in front of them. Uh, my favorite way to, to fly fish for brook trout is the dry fly. You know, bushy, attractor style, 
uh, flies like uh, this is a wolf style fly. Uh, Mr. Rapidan is what this fly is called. Uh, H&L variant. Uh, this is another another good fly. Imitates a lot. Uh, looks like everything. Um, and then you got. You know, if you want to, if you're not eating dry flies, you can always go underneath with different uh, nymphs and, and even some streamers if you want. Uh, this fly has become very popular the last couple years, the mop fly. It's just a microfiber mop for cleaning your house. Uh, you know, different nymphs, hare's ears, uh, caddis fly imitations, any, anything really. And to explain to you, uh, to the dry, if you've never fly fished, a dry fly imitates an, ins an insect on top of the water. A nymph that we are talking about would be the insect in its larval stage under the water as it hatches or lives under the water before it comes up and becomes a flying bug is the easiest way to look at it. Todd, what about uh, terrestrials such as beetles, ants, uh, things that naturally occur in the woods here that fall into the water? Yeah, a lot of these streams have, uh, you know, there's beetles, black ants. Uh, flying ants, uh, grasshoppers, June bugs, things like that. All that stuff these, these fish will eat. Um, so, you know, like a foam beetle, something like that. I like to use something that I can see well. So that's why I like the, you know, this, these flies with the big yellow wings. You know, the fish don't care that it's yellow, even though there's really nothing yellow in, in nature. But, uh, yeah, they'll eat, they'll eat anything. Uh, some of the big some of the big fish might even eat a little mice, a little mouse swimming across the water. Some of these smaller streams, uh, even brown trout have moved in. Yeah. And some of these little streams have brown trout as wide as the stream is. Yeah. Uh, now, when we talk about brook trout fishing, brook trout is a native fish, meaning these, these trout have been here for hundreds of years. They were born uh, in the stream, they live in the stream their entire life. But one thing that we stress is please ca uh, practice catch and release. This fishery, a native brook trout cannot take a lot of fish being caught out, the adult fish and taken home to eat or be mounted. If you want to get one mounted, please get a fiberglass reproduction and catch and release is key to keeping the native brook trout fishery healthy. Yeah. The other thing that um, when we look at uh, the brook trout fishery is simply, yes, you can catch them on bait, but please, guys, we ask that you don't fish too much bait, especially smaller stuff like maggots or mealworms, because you'll have a lot of fish swallow the hook. And even if you cut it off, the survival rate's not really well. If you go, please use artificial lures and bend the barbs down. Pinch your barbs. Yeah, pinch the barbs, the big key, so it easily comes out of the fish. Thanks for sharing, Todd. Now let's get back to some fishing. So these these fish will, they'll sit in current, but these little pockets you see, like this faster moving water here. Yeah. I'm probably gonna start casting just a little to the right of it in that little pocket. Uh, any of these little pockets behind rocks and stuff like that, there's probably gonna be a fish. Anywhere there's a break in the, in the current, they yeah. can hide. Opportunistic feeder, looking for something just floating by. Yep. Just a little guy. So we want to wet our hands first, because these fish have a protective slime. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want to ruin that. That helps them protect from uh, protect from disease and stuff. Yes, guys. When you do catch this native brook trout, please wet your hands. So you were eating chips earlier. They don't eat the Doritos on their skin. Yeah, so we got here just a little, little native brook trout, one of the prettiest fish there are. Man, in my opinion, the prettiest fish God ever made. If you can find a prettier freshwater fish, show it to me. Look at those fins. Just absolutely gorgeous, the spots. That trout was born in this stream. How old do you think he is, Todd? This is a, this is a young trout. This might be a two or three year old fish. You grab the up in this stream. Yep. Alrighty, well let's turn them loose and try her again. Just gonna pop the fly out. And see by being barbless, there's no damage to that fish's mouth other than a little pinhole. Not much different than when you get blood drawn. And he's alive to go another day. Yep. Perfect. We'll be right back with more Friends in Wild Places right after this. When you catch a fish, you know, they got slime, their mouths are full of slime. 
they drown your fly. A lot of times it'll, it'll be hard for your fly to, to float after that. So we just use uh, some sort of shake and float. It's just a, a desiccant. Uh, just just drop, your, drop your fly in, give it a shake. Now blow before, it off and you're good to go again. Before they invented it, it was a lot of false casting. <laughs> yep. Yeah, blowing on it. Technology's great. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Let's go get them. Probably. Might be another one laying there. Honestly, probably right. Let's see. Well, we'll give her a shot. See if we can get two out of the same nice little spot. Oh, oh, look at that one. Now that, my friends, is what we're talking about. That is a really good. That is a very good fish in a stream this size. Pennsylvania brook trout. That, my, and you folks, you saw, we just caught one out of there. Another brookie. Look at the fins on that, that beautiful orange color. He's got a little mark on his back. Looks like a blue, oh, yeah. blue heron or something. Might Some type of predator him. right here tried to get him. And again, what a gorgeous brook trout. We'll turn them loose and let them, well, let them go another day. Okay, folks, Todd's gonna try to work in on the back of that riffle on, the, on that rock. There's probably a fish laying in there. We'll find out. He'll start at the back of the hole and then work his way up so you don't cast over top of fish. I expected one as soon as it hit the water. Well, that's, folks, why it's called fishing and not getting. See, there's one slot hiding in the rocks. Nope. Nothing. That's one that it's instant. They either come to, out and slam it or nothing. A little, my fly's a little soft from this water log from that last fish. Yeah. I'll snap one over there by that stick, see if we can't get one. He makes it look so easy. I would have caught the trees behind me six times and snagged three times in front of me by now. Time to move. That's the one good thing about brook trout fishing. If you don't get it after a few casts, you just keep moving. You don't have to set and fish the same water all day. We have two. Oh, there was one. Beautiful trout. So here we have another really, oh my goodness, gorgeous. really, really healthy, really healthy brook trout. That is uh, almost 10. My That span on my hands yeah. is nine inches. That's a beautiful brook trout right there. Just beautiful color and look at his fins. And again, by using that barbless hook on a fly, he's hooked in the snout. Todd just pops that out and put him face back in the water. And he lives to fight another day. Gotta love native brook trout. The Keystone Elk Country Alliance, combining an entertaining and educational experience with family fun. The leader in conservation education, improving habitat projects for elk and other wildlife in Pennsylvania's elk country. In the heart of the Pennsylvania wilds, the Keystone Elk Country Alliance, located at the Elk Country Visitor Center. To learn more, visit experienceelkcountry.com. People are continuous metal technology. Yo, working with the folks in a ballistic product. They do all kinds of checks to make sure ITX is the best product.
and then they rely on us to do the final check. Images like these can make us feel powerless, but know there are people making a difference. Your gift of money and prayers are what they need to make a big impact on the lives of others. We provide to existing missions already established to feed, clothe, teach, and love the poorest of the poor and marginalized. Give to Cross Catholic now by calling or visit us on the web. God bless. Looking for a great getaway spot to disconnect from this? Come relax and unwind with us at the Lakeview Store Cabins and RV Camping. Located across from the Cinnamahoning State Park, smack dab in the heart of the Pennsylvania wilds. And don't forget to pick up your Tom Bob Outdoors and Kika Partners and Conservation logo wear while you're in our area. Give us a call at 814-647-8657 and be sure to like us on Facebook. Welcome back to Tom Bob Outdoors, Friends and Wild Places. All right, Todd, well, we got a little bit of fishing in. You are the district manager for the Cameron County Conservation District, and I know I've been following you on Facebook. You're doing a lot of things with the streams up here and enlighten us a little bit on what's going on. Yeah, we're pretty blessed in Cameron County. We don't have a lot of water pollution or anything like that, so we can spend our time doing, making our good waters better. And we do a lot of that with uh, stream bank stabilization and fish habitat enhancement. Uh, <clears throat> putting in different devices that, that uh, direct water certain ways, create scour holes, create uh, fish habitat, uh, all while stabilizing the stream bank and the stream bed as well. And uh, you know, a lot of the sites we've done, you go back a year later and they're full of trout, full of bass. Um, they work really well. Now, and I know you've removed some of the old impoundments or low head dams. What was the reasoning and why was that done? Because I know it's improved the fisheries. Yeah, there's a couple dams that we've removed. Uh, the, more, the most notable is the what the locals called the, the Pickrick Dam up at the, near the fairgrounds and up near Emporium. Uh, they're impeding fish passage. The, the fish can't get up uh, when they need to. Uh, summer gets here, the water warms up, the trout need to get up to colder waters, and they can't get there. Uh, so every year, pretty much every year, if it got warm, we had a fish kill. And so we removed that dam. It was also a safety hazard. Kids were always there swimming. Mm -hmm. um, it was an easy place to drown. And uh, we tore it out, and uh, this summer, we're going to be going back in and restoring the habitat there. Not only at the dam site, but, but uh, about a mile stretch there, we got, we've got the funding to do that. So um, we're pretty excited about that. And then I remember last year on Facebook, and we'll show the, uh, the viewers some of the video, but you were uh, able to take and you built a special structure in the stream and at flood state, I remember you saying it's working the way it should. Can you enlighten us a little bit on what was that and what's the goal of those structures? Uh, that's a device called a cross vein. It does a couple things. It, it, it stabilizes both sides of the stream. Uh, it turns all the water towards the center. So that stabilizes the banks. It also creates a scour hole. From the turbulence, From the turbulence of going through. Water going over the logs and those scour holes can get deep depending on the stream they're on. Um, some of them are six, seven feet deep, eight feet deep. Um, and those are great places for fish, especially warm, when the water gets warm, they find that deep water um, and they, they work really good. And then when high water fish can move up over those? Yes, they're, they're made so that fish can, can safely make, get up over the, over the structure. Well, folks, thanks to the work of Todd and great people and his staff, other places like the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy and other organizations, conservation is alive and well on our waterways here in Cameron County and across the PA Great Outdoors region, the PA Wilds are making tremendous comebacks. We've got wonderful fisheries. Come wet a line, you'll find fish in the PA Great Outdoors. Thanks for watching Tom Bob Outdoors. We'll see you next time. Welcome to this week's Pennsylvania Great Outdoors Minute. The PA Great Outdoors region is a big, beautiful part of Pennsylvania and home to award-winning Clarion County. 
On the Allegheny River, honored as Pennsylvania River of the Year, you'll find the beautiful resort town of Foxburg and the Foxburg Country Club, the oldest golf course in continuous use in the U.S. East Brady celebrates life on the river, and pool number nine is popular with boaters. Brady's Bend Overlook offers spectacular views of the river below. The Clarion River is designated a National Wild and Scenic Recreation River that flows through Cook Forest State Park called America's Best Old Growth Forest by Men's Journal. Explore the Red Bank Valley Trail, the first Pennsylvania Trail of the Year. Clarion's Autumn Leaf Festival is the 2017 Pennsylvania Wilds Event of the Year with a Farmers and Crafters Day and the Tournament of Leaves Parade. To plan your trip to the Pennsylvania Great Outdoors, go to visit pago.com or like PA Great Outdoors on Facebook. <laughs> 